once we've calibrated uh, we can close the setup button the setup window and then notice the summary window again we can toggle it on or off first listing is the data there's actually a position sensor and a velocity sensor and within those there's some data stored and there's also some data stored for each of our workbook pages we'll talk about those in a minute and then there's this little window shade that we can drag up or down to move the display options digits or FFT, fast Fourier transform, a graph, histogram, yada 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 and then down here we have match graph, a workbook. This is our workbook called match graph. And I could close that out and bring it back just by double clicking on match graph. Or I could rename it. And that might be a good thing to do. Click and wait and click again. And um, I could call this something, somebody's name in my group or something so that when I print uh, it'll show up as being belonging to our group. Or you could, um, well, yeah, that's it's best to use last names or or a group of first names uh, for the workbook name now I have got these different worksheets here that we're going to be working through during this experiment you're going to fill out the cover sheet if something you cannot edit but you'd like to when the when the workbook is chosen you can go up to the display menu and say show tools and now you have these tools over here which lets you edit the workbook for the most part you can hide the tools for this experiment uh, unless something seems to be out of your control then you can just show the tools again and you have full control to delete or destroy or <laughs> two different things to your workbook if I take the word position and drop it onto a graph icon it shows me that I have two sets of data there's falling up and collide and I could turn one of those off and actually still leave it in the experiment it's just not showing on this display or I could turn it back on and turn the other one off we can say zoom to fit we can zoom in with this button we can zoom out we can zoom select highlight some data it turns it yellow and it zooms way in on it if I deselect just by clicking in the white space and auto zoom auto scale or scale to fit it will um, zoom again there's a little zoom feature over here on the graph the little squiggly on the bar on the scale uh, lets me zoom and again on the horizontal I can grab the actual axis and move the axis around. Okay, so there's lots of different scale features. And finally, I can go in, double click on the graph, and I can go into axis settings and manually set for the y axis or for the x axis the minimum or the maximum values. So, like I said, there's lots of different scaling options and even more beyond what we've seen. When I collect new data, it's going to appear right here on the graph. And I had a three second countdown. I don't know if you noticed that. And as I move the block, the data is just going to record as I go. And I can click stop. And again, I can look just at run three. But you know what? I don't like run three. It's pretty messy. So I'm going to click on it over here in the summary window and hit delete on the keyboard. And this asks me to confirm. And now run three is gone from the graph and also from my summary window. The data no longer exists in my experiment. I could also choose delete last data run and on the keyboard there's a shortcut command minus and then a confirm uh, will get rid of the very last data run that you took but I'm gonna go ahead and click some more data and again this has a three second countdown feature to it which you might find useful during the experiment there's some noise in this data that means I turned my block at some angle so that there was not a direct reflection it saw all the way up to seven meters so again I can just zoom in I can turn on some statistics find the maximum value but again that's finding some bad data so I just want to highlight the good stuff and now it tells me my maximum is less than one meter away 0.919 I have lots of other statistics I can turn on like standard deviation which might make sense for a region of constant um, measurement I see I have an uncertainty of 0.1 millimeters here because uh, that's the standard deviation uh, there's fits that we can turn on. We can turn on a linear fit and highlight a region. See how the slope and the intercept adjust as I move my region around? It might be, you know, a linear fit doesn't make a lot of sense here, but maybe this could be a quadratic fit. It's not too bad for a quadratic fit. If I double click on the fit, it'll tell me the form of the fit. That I have the first constant, a, which is the coefficient for x squared and then my b belongs to the is the coefficient for x and then c is the zeroth order 